In today's lesson, we're going to talk more about list operations. Some, we're going to mention some more functions and some more methods that you can use with your lists. Let's just do a quick review. Remember, a list is a container that stores a collection of values or elements. Its values or elements are stored in sequential order, and the, that sequential order is determined by the index, and its length can grow or shrink. So today we're going to grow and shrink our lists. We're going to first talk about another list function. Let's review the list functions that we already have been using. That's len for the length, sum, max, and min. Remember, a function comes first, and then the list would be passed in as an argument. The new function we're going to talk about today is called list, and it makes a copy of your list. So for a list function, you can copy the same reference, which re if you just make a copy of the variable, which is a reference, it refers to the same list. Changes made to the copy of this with the same reference change the same list. I'm going to show you an example of that in just a second. But if you make a copy of the list instead of a copy of the reference, then you have two complete different lists. They start out the same with the same values, but they are two different lists instead of referring to the same list. When you make a copy, this list function is not a return function. It does take an argument, which is the original list. And here's an example of what the code would look like. So list is my function. The original list is going to be passed in as the argument. And it's a return function, so it has to be assigned to something. It's going to be assigned a new list. Each variable reference refers to a different list, although the lists have the same values. That's if I just copy the, the variable itself. So if I created a list called values and then I assigned it to another variable called prices, they're both referring to the same list. This is what we do when we pass it in as a parameter. So if I use values as an argument and it goes into a function, then whatever I call it, whether it's the same name or not, it's actually just a copy of this reference and they refer to the same list. That's why I don't have to say global or do any kind of things with my list if I just make a, you know, pass this in as a parameter, it makes a copy to the same reference, my list gets changed inside the function, and main function refers to the same list. That's what's happening with our parameters. But maybe I want actually two separate lists. Then I'm going to use the list function like it is right here. Values was my original list, and I assign it to my new list. Now I have two. I have values and prices, but notice that there's two separate lists. So if I don't use the list function, I have two variables that refer to the same list. If I do use the list function, then I have two lists, and each one has its own identifier or reference. We're going to practice that today. So let's try it in a new program. Okay, I'm in Code Sculptor right now, and I've got a program started. And you can actually copy this code from the website and paste it, so you can get a start of it too, and you don't have to do all this typing because this is mostly review. So I've got my main function down here. I'm going to declare a list called original. I'm going to fill the list, and I'm going to print the list. These are all things that we've done for all three assignments now. So it's not new, but let's just kind of review. In my fill list, I, I, um, original is going to be my argument, and it's going to get passed into this parameter. Now most of the time we've done parameters and arguments, they've been the same. They don't have to be, but it just kind of makes it clear in your mind where, where a value is going. But if I want to make my functions really flexible so I can use them for any list, I can make the parameter whatever I want and use it in here. So what's going to happen is original is my argument. It gets passed into the list. And over here, original is my argument. It's going to get passed into the list for print. But this way, I can use these two for other lists besides just original. So this makes it really flexible. And this is something that you, you don't have to use, but this is how we're going to do it for this program and something you can think about as you're programming. So I'm using a for loop. Instead of getting random numbers, I'm simply going to take my value of x, which is my counter. It's going to start at 1, and it's going to go to 10, and those are going to be the values that I'm going to append to my list. 
Now this isn't the only way to create a list, so I want to show you a couple of other ways very quickly before we actually do the fill list. So I'm going to comment this out for a second. And it is said in the textbook, you can just create a list by giving it value. So I could come in here, instead of doing empty brackets, I could actually just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I can actually just list my values if I know what, the, what they're going to be. So this is one line of code versus you know a for loop and it's a great option if you want to do it so that you don't have to use a for loop with a pen to create a list you can if you know what you want to start with you can just start with it the other thing you can do like when we did our dice rolls and we wanted to have start a list with just zeros and we did a for loop for that and there's a shortcut for that that's called replicating and what you use for replicating is the asterisk. It's like multiply, so it's kind of like multiply. I'm going to use, this is the value that I want to replicate, and then this is the replicator operator, and then I say how many times. So if I want 10 zeros, I can just do something like this. Then I'm going to call my print list, so you'll see that I have 10 zeros. So this is something that we could have done for dice rolls. It's just a nice little option. So I've shown you a couple of things, uh, options for when you're creating lists and putting values in them. But for today, I do want to use the for loop and I'm just going to put in 1 to 10. I'm going to get back to where we were. I'm going to uncomment this out. And let's run this. And you should know what it looks like even before we run it. I've got my values 1 to 10 and that is creating my list. Now I want to make a copy of this list. So I don't want to just refer to it. That's what's happening right here. This list is referring to the same as original. So I've got one list over here in my memory and both of them are pointing to it. But now I want a second list. And I want to keep the original and not mess with it at all. And I want to, I'm want to. i going to mess around with the copy. So let's create another list. And I'm going to call it copy list. Let's use the list operator and I'm going to use original as my argument. Now if I print my copy list, I can still use the same function print list and this time I'm going to pass in as an argument copy list. And I should get the same list twice. Okay. So this one is my original and this is my copy. I'm going to make some changes to copy and I'm going to keep original. We'll be able to compare them at the end and we'll see how it goes. Now just to kind of save me some time, I'm going to create another function that's going to call print list and it's going to uh, print these two. So I'm going to be able to call it a couple of times throughout the program. It'll just save me some time later. So I'm going to call it results and I'm going to pass in both lists for my argument for my parameters. So I'm going to have original and copy list. And I'm going to just add in a couple of things. So first, like a print statement, and then I'm going to have like original list, and and then I'm going to call print list with original. Maybe do another print, and then my heading for copy. So I, if I, anytime I want to print both of my lists, and I could do this twice, but you know, go ahead and have the headings here. Lots of functions to running up your program is great. So I'm going to take this off right here. I'm going to just call it results. And pass in two arguments. Make sure you, you're going the same order. And I'll get the same results. With nice little headings for each one. And I'm going to make some changes to copy list. In the end, I want to print these out again. This one is going to stay the same. And you'll see that copy is different. So I have two different lists. I can make a change to copy and not a change to list if I use the list function. Let's get back to our lecture about adding elements to our list. 
Now, we already have been using some list methods. Remember, methods use the dot notation, and the two that we've been using so far are append and sort. So if I want to use these, I have my list first, dot, my method, and I have to have parentheses. There are two ways to add elements to your list. The first way is append. It does require an argument because you have to tell it what you're going to append. And it always adds the new element to the end of the list. And here's an example. Now we've done append many times already. So it's not really new. This is more kind of a review. Let's go ahead and add a function to our program that will add elements to the list by using append. In our code, let's just create a new procedure for a new function for this. You probably wouldn't really do it this way in your program, but this is going to give you some examples of how to use append. And like I said, it's really review. Um, so this isn't something that you probably do a lot of, but using append you will. And this is just a way to practice. So we're going to call this append element. And I'm going to keep it generic by using the list. And let's just get some random numbers. So it's going to, you don't have to do a whole lot as the user, just kind of watch it run. So I'm going to get a random number and I'm going to append it. I've already got my import random here. And I'm just going to use a variable like num. And let's get a random number. And I'm going to go, when I did my original list, I went from 1 to 10. And I'm going to go a little bit bigger, so I want to have a few more numbers to work with. So I'm going to go 1 to 15. And then I'm just going to append it. So it's the list dot append, and then num is my argument. So just remember that notation for the function. I just want to print a message to go along with this. So as you're running the program and you're kind of figuring out what's happening, let's just be user friendly here. So I'm going to just print what was appended. So I'm going to say the number, and I'm going to be using strings here. So I'm going to use the plus and num okay, was appended to the list. And we know that it's always going to append at the end. Okay, let's just, um, we're going to call this function. We're going to create many little functions as we go through. So I'm going to also create a function to call that function. Seems like a lot of little work here and hopefully you're not going to get too confused by this, but I like to divide my programs up into lots of little functions. And it's easier for testing that way, it's easier for de debugging, and your main function won't get too big and unwieldy. I've already thought this out. If you were just now starting it from scratch, you probably have a whole lot of stuff in your main function and then divide it up to little functions, and that's fine too. So I'm going to call this change list. Okay. And right, and this is going to be like my test function that we've done in other programs. And so I'm going to put in append element. And that's all I have so far, but I'm going to add more to it. Just a regular function call. So after I, before I get um, got results here, and let's, let's see, let's change the copy list by calling change list. And instead of using the original, I'm just going to use copy. Now after I do this, I might want to see my results again. So I'm going to do the results at the beginning. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to see the results again. Okay, let's run this program. So I have my original. I said the number one was appended to the list. I have my copy and I appended it. Okay. You knew that was going to happen. Let's find out another way of adding elements to our list. Now a second way is using insert. Insert is a little bit different from append because append you only have one argument and it always puts it at the end of the list. For insert it lets you put it anywhere you want in the list. It's going to require two arguments. The first one is the index or where you want to insert it and the second argument is what you want to insert. Let's take a closer look at the insert method. So first of all, it's a method, so you're going to use dot notation. And you have to give it the first argument is the index. 
So think about what are the valid index values for your list. Of course, the first index is zero, and it's going to go up to the length of the list. You might think, well, wait a minute, the length of the list is one more than the index, and that's true. So if you put in an index, so if your list has 10 values, the current index values are zero to nine. So of course, any of those are valid. But I'm also inserting it, and when I insert it, I do increase the length. So if I use the index 10 on my current list that has 10 values, so it's 0 to 9. So if I put in an index value of 10 or anything higher, it will append it to the end, just like a pen. So you don't have to really worry about getting an error or an out-of-range index. But in other languages, you would. So you really should try and be careful, even though Python lets you get away with it. Yeah, try and be a little bit careful with the values that you use for insert, that you do try and keep it within the range of zero to the length of the list. Now what happens with the values that are already there is they get moved up, their index value increases by one, and here's kind of a picture of it's happening. So here, here's this is my original list, and I'm going to insert something at position one, which is the second element. Everything else moves down, so Emily was at index one, and now you can see it's at two, and so on and so forth. So everything just kind of moves on over when you're inserting. Here's some examples of code that uses the insert method. So if I had a list called bowling scores dot insert, and I'm going to insert it at position five, so it's going to be the sixth element, and here's the value that I'm going to insert there. If I want to put it at the very beginning, maybe I have a list called numbers list dot insert. The zero is the very first position, and I'm going to insert the value three. And this is just kind of in general. I can use variables. I can have a variable for the index, and I can have a variable for the value. So let's try this. We're actually going to do this with some variables. We're going to pick a random index and a random value and insert it into our list. Okay, back at our code, we already have one for append element. Let's do another function for insert element. And I'm going to use the generic the list. Okay. I only got one random number here, and this time I'm going to get two because the insert method uses two arguments. So the first one is going to be the number that I want to append. I'm just going to do basically the same thing. So random dot randint from 1 to 15. And then for my position, um, I know what the length of my list is, so I can be a kind of more specific. I'm going to call it int for short for index. And I'm going to get a random number between 0, which is the first index, and the length of the list. So I can use my function here and whatever, because my the the length of the list is going to change, so whatever it is, I can find it, and I'm going to get a random number between that. Now let's go ahead and use the insert method. The list comes first, dot notation, and then insert, and then my two arguments with the index first, followed by the number. Okay. Then to be a little user-friendly, we're going to do something like this, where I had a message. Let's go ahead and print a message. So the number, use our string notation here, num, was inserted. So I used append here, and I'm going to use inserted at index, and then string of my end. Okay. So nice user-friendly message that, once again, you probably wouldn't use, but for this program, as you're just learning these different things, it'll be helpful. Now let's call this in our change list. And if I'm testing and I already know append works, I could actually take this off or I could comment it out. So I just test the one new function at a time. So it's a good testing technique that we talked about in an earlier lecture. Let's run this. Hope we don't have any errors. Here's our original, here's our copy, and then I did the append, and you can see the 3, and then I did the 9 was inserted at 10, so the 3 got moved over, and that's what we've got left. If I run it again, I can run it several times, just kind of see what happens each time to my copy.
The next list operation we're going to talk about is the in operator. The in operator will let you know if an element is present in a list. So you might have the user enter in a number or think about the hangman game, they're going to enter in a letter and you want to know if that particular value is in the list. So here's the structure of an, using the in operator. You start with the word if, the value that you want to search for, and the list that you are searching in. So if 5 in original, and one thing you could do is print, but just like any if statement, you can do pretty much any kind of statement right here. So print is one example. Here's another example, because I can have variables here. So if num, you know, it could be a random number, or it could be a number that the user entered, is in my list, then maybe I want to append it to a different list. Because it was there. And often you want to know more than, uh, than just if the value is in the list. You might want to know where it is because I might need to remove it or move it or something like that. So I can use the in operator just to know is it there and do something with it. I can also use something called the index method. So in is an operator and I can use an index method. Let's take a look at that. This is a method, so remember it's going to use dot notation. It's going to return the index of the element. So here's an example. So first I'm going to check to see if it's in there. If num is in my list, I can use the index method right here, and it's going to return the position of where that number was found. If this number is in my list more than once, it's only going to return the first time that it finds it. If you use the index method when an element isn't in the list, you will get a runtime error. So you should always use the in method or the in operator to avoid uh, an, an error. So here's how you can do that. First I'm going to check to see if the number is in the list and if it is, I can find out the index. And If it's not, I might set the index to some kind of value like a negative number. I, not zero because zero is a valid index, but I can set it to some kind of value where I could use this later in my code. So if it's not in there, I don't try and use it if, if it, um, like it is and get that error. So I'm just throwing a whole bunch of code at you here, but using the index method is great, but you do have to be careful because if you use it like an out of range error, you, it will stop your program. Let's try using the in operator with the index method in our list operation program. In our code, we're going to add another function in here. We have a pen and we have insert, so let's add one called find element. And we're going to use the in operator and the index method. Let's use the list as our parameter. And I'm going to get a random number and then just check to see if that random number is in my list. And let's go a little bit bigger here because right now most of these numbers that I'm going to get will be in the list. Well, that'll be okay. Let's just, we can do 1 to 15. If you want to use different numbers, you know, go ahead. That'd be good testing. So first let's use the in operator. So if num in the list. Okay, what do I want to happen if it is in the list? Well, let's find out the index. So index is going to equal, and this is a method, so I have to put my list first, followed by the dot, and the method, which is index. And in parentheses, my argument is going to be num. So if number is in the list, it's going to return the value, the position, to end. And then I want to do a, like a nice user-friendly print statement. So print the number and then str num is in the list at index end. Okay. So I can put all the information in there, all nice and user friendly. But what if it's not in there? Let's just throw in an else. Print the number str num. Is not in the list. Okay, so either way, something will happen. Let's call this function, and I'm going to come here to change this. This is like my test function, and I could delete or comment out the other two. I know they work, but I'll just keep adding it in. So I've got three things going on here. Let's see how it goes. 
So I've got the number 10 that I appended, the number 3 was inserted, and the number 7 is in the list at index 7. So let's just see. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So sure enough, 7 is at 7. You could run it several times. Let me get things a little bit different. You can see that the number 12 is not in the list. So I've got some pretty good working functions right now. Let's talk about a couple more uh, methods. Now the last thing to talk about when we want to change our list is to delete elements. So we talked about adding them, we talked about finding them, let's talk about deleting them. There are two ways to delete an element. So just like there's two ways to insert an element, we could insert or append. There are two ways to delete. We can delete by index or by value. Let's talk about index first. To delete an element by index, I'm going to use the pop method. It requires one argument, and that's the index of where do I want to delete it. So it doesn't matter what the value is, whatever's at that index, it's going to be gone. If you do have pop with no argument, the default is that it's going to be the last one. So it's kind of like append always goes to the end, pop always goes to the end, unless you give it a specific position, and then it will do it wherever. So here's some examples. My list.pop, so I'm using that notation. One will delete the second element. My list.pop, empty parentheses, will delete the last element. Let's add a function to our program to try out the pop code we've got append insert and find and now we're going to be deleting so the first one is deleting by index and I am going to use pop but just to be really clear I'm going to call my function delete by index and of course I have a parameter and let's just get a random index and we're going to pop whatever is there I'm going to call it in for index. So I'm kind of using number for my value and end for my index. Now you can use anything, but you should be descriptive and you don't want to get your variables mixed up. So do use kind of unique names. Now what happens if I try to pop something that's not there? You do want to be careful with that because you don't want any kind of runtime error. So let's be careful with the random number that I'm going to select for my index, it can be from 0 to 1 minus the length of the list. So if I get the length of the list, um, that's always one more than the last um, index, so I'm going to subtract 1. So all of these should be valid ranges in my list. And now let's just uh, pop this, so I have the list dot pop, and in parentheses I'm going to put my index, and then let's do a nice user-friendly message. So print. Now what was the number there? Okay. Before I delete it, I'm going to find out what it is, and I'm just going to assign it to number. So num is going to equal. How do I do that? We want to access that element only. We're going to use the square brackets. Now most of the time throughout this program you see we're using parentheses because we're talking about methods and functions. But if I want to access a single element, like we learned earlier, we use the square brackets. So I have the list and I want to know what's at the index that I selected. So whatever is at this position is going to get assigned to num. Now I can print it. So I can say the number and I have num was popped from index in. So a nice little kind of user friendly message that's letting me know what's happening. Let's add this to change list. And see what happens. So of course I'm appending, I'm inserting, and then I'm just checking to see if it's there, and then I pop number 10, it was popped from index 10. And you can see that there is no 10 here in my copy. Run it again a couple of times, 
2 was popped. You can see there's no 2. 6 was popped. There's no 6. So it's working really well. So if you know what position you want to pop from, you're good. But what if you know the value and not where to find it? Well, you could use the index first. So you could do the, um, you could do something like the find. I could see if it's there, find the index, and then pop it. Um, that will certainly work. There is a different way, and that's with the, the second method that will let us remove. The way to delete an element from a list is to do it by value. So if I know what number I want to delete, but I don't know where it is, I'm going to use remove. Remove requires one argument, and that is the value itself. So it doesn't really care where it is. It's going to basically do the work for you. It's going to see if it's in there and then remove it. However, if the value is not in the list, an error will occur. So you should use the in operator like we've talked about before. I use the in operator for index. I should use the in operator for um, remove so I don't get a runtime error. So here's some examples. My list remove 5 and this if you already know that 5 is in your list, you could remove it no matter where it is. I don't have to know the index. Now here's a better example because I'm using the in operator if num in my list, then I'm going to remove it else I might print a message or I might not even have an else but make sure that it's in the list before I try to remove it so that I don't so I don't get a runtime error. So let's try this the remove in our program. So we've already got delete by index. Let's let's add in a delete by value. And this will use the remove method. So once again, let's get a random number. I don't need two pop needed. Um, I just needed the random number for the position. Then I found what the number is. I could do the reverse, get a random number and find its index. But I don't really need the index. I just need to know if it's in there. So let's get a random number that I want to remove instead of a random index. So I'm going to get num. And um, I don't have 0, so I'm going to start at 1. Well, I could do 0 because it won't be in there. I just want to have, have be a good tester there. And um, I'm just going to use my operator. If num in the list, I want to remove it. So the list dot remove and put num. There we go. I can do a nice user-friendly print statement. So I don't know where it was removed from. I can just say that it was removed. Now if, the, if that same number is in there more than once, it's only going to remove it the first time. I have to go through and search again starting from where I left off, but we won't worry about that today. And I'm going to have an else in there. The number wasn't in the list and was not removed. So either way, I'm going to get some kind of a message so I know which uh, function I'm calling here. So delete by value. Okay, and I have a little error here because I can't have wasn't. I will say was not about that. Or I can change my quotation marks. So 8 was removed, okay, 13 wasn't in the list, 9 was popped. I've got all five of them working here. So take your time with this program. Really kind of look at what you're doing. Talk about it. Talk it over in your head. You know, see if you can summarize each of these functions, what they're doing, how they work, the methods, the operators, 
And then the one new function that we learned down here, list. Let's see if it all makes sense so that you could use these in a different program. If I was really going to use like append, insert, um, in, I probably wouldn't use it this way because this is just for practice. But you want to get comfortable with what they do and how you call them so you can use them in different ways, like if you're going to program a game or a different kind of program, when I, when I wouldn't want to just do the lists. So let's just review what this lesson was all about. Here's the functions that we've already been using in our programs. We've already been using len, max, min, and sum. So hopefully you've, you are very comfortable with these list functions. And the methods that we were already using are append and sort. Hopefully you're already comfortable with these methods. The new ones that we learned today, we learned a new function list. And then we learned a couple of operations, like we learned the replicating. And we learned in. And for our new methods, insert, index, pop, and remove. Now to finish up this program, I want you to add some more things on your own. So a couple of things that you could do are like change the values. So instead of just 1 to 10, maybe come up with your own range. And the same thing with the random numbers that you're looking for uh, to add or to remove. So you don't have to keep with the 1 to 10 or the 1 to 15. Kind of throw in some of your own um, ideas there. And then this is what I want everybody to do. I want you to add a loop in your change list function so that you're going to do it multiple times. This can be a definite loop. So you can use a for loop or a while loop with a, with a counter. You can ask how many changes do you want to do to your list, maybe 10, 20, you know. And then you're going to just loop this change list by getting a random number to randomly select which of those five new functions that we created do you want to do. You're going to perform that list operation, you know, whichever one for random number. So maybe one is appending, two is inserting, three is finding, four could be popping, and five could be removing. So get a random number, call the correct function to perform an operation, and then just see the results at the end. So your final program could look something like this. I'm going to ask how many list changes, so maybe I want to start with 10. And here's my original, my copy, here's the 10 things that are done. So I've got an insert, remove, insert, remove, pop, insert, insert, remove, append, insert. I just randomly selected. And then after the changes, I see my original list is still original, and my copy has done all these different things have gone on. And I could just run it several times. Maybe I want to do 20 changes. And so I've got 20 changes. So most of your program is already done for you. What you're going to be doing is adding in your loop. And everything else is there. So this is your program that you want to finish up. And it, this is the list operators program. And when you're finished with everything and you've put your own touches to it, then you'll be ready to turn it in.